like if I had to put a name to the current aspirational aesthetic right now, it would be dystopian cowgirl fortune teller. Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to either the last video of the year or the first video of the year, however long it takes me to edit this because I am in a desperate struggle with myself to try and enjoy some time off and the millennial urge to monetize every waking moment of my life. So as promised, today I'm going to share with y'all my favorite makeup look that I have been doing all the time lately. It's gonna be the one layer Ish. complexion and then essentially just fishing through the box of all of the stuff that I just shared in my best to the best and putting on the face of makeup that makes me feel the most powerful. <laughs> it's just been where I have ended up when I sit down to do my makeup lately, no matter how hard I try to do something else. I'm always just like, yes, that looks nice, but wouldn't it be nice with a little bit of that thing that I've been doing every single time? And it always kind of arrives in the same place, so I figured that was worth sharing. I think by the end of this video, I should probably have arrived at something to give you guys as a word of the year. And uh, without, without further, <laughs> let's go ahead and jump in, guys. All right, so my one layer foundation situation is, I start with the Tom Fjord. And honestly, every single time I say Tom Ford, I like really resist the urge to say Tom Fjord and I just gave in that time. And I do that. Pretty much all the spots that I would want to be light. Give myself a little coverage moment. Then, then I go with the Westman Atelier Biscuit and I aggressively contour everything that I would contour. Aggressive, aggressive, be, be aggressive. Am I a viral TikToker yet? And then I have the Makeup by Mario stick in light and I do this number. Oh, oh, she's a color theory queen. Look at that, the difference between that color and that color, there is actually a difference. So we're just doing a little, a little moment. And then I just blend and I'm careful to kind of, you know, not, not just go in like a circular motion around my entire face, I'm learn, and because that would totally ruin what I've just done, but more so try and blend one logical section at a time, get it in the old hairline. I've been wearing more makeup lately. And I think it has to do less with me like consciously changing my aesthetic and more to do with being more excited about the makeup that I'm using. Like just being more interested in a lot of these products that happen to be fuller coverage or just a little bit more like made up looking. But also my skills, I have to finally give myself a little bit of kudos. My skills have actually improved since the beginning. And I think it also has to do with the fact that I like to wear more eyeshadow now than I ever did. There was a time where I was like, I'm just not an eyeshadow person, but it was because again, I felt like my skills just weren't really there yet. And I watched a lot, a lot, a lot of Wayne Goss videos and a lot of the Kardashians and eventually learned how to map out my eye shape. It took me years of trial and error to figure out what my eye shape is flattered by because a lot of the, I don't I mean obviously there's millions of people making videos on YouTube, but a lot of the ones that I was watching, they have really, really big eyelids and like not a lot of space right here. Or Nikki Tutorials has eyes like me, but she doesn't do makeup anything like I would wear it, you know? So it took me a while to kind of figure that out on my own. But now that I, now that I do, I always say, you know, learn the rules so you can break the rules. And now I just like to smudge it everywhere. And it's probably also partially inspired by the popularity this year of the whole one and done shadow thing. I mean, Miss Amanda Z, who is, she's 
left the premises. She left the closet in a whole mess, big Aries energy. She is like, you know, the queen of the one and done eyeshadow. I've even seen like a Lana Davison talk about her favorite one and done eyeshadows. Hannah Louise, <laughs> Hannah Louise Poston, who I binge watched yesterday, talked uh, at length about them recently. She does a lot of those like overhead swatch videos and they're very calming, very much enjoy those. I think that like that has sort of inspired me to want to just do smudgier things, less precise, which is great because I don't have a lot of patience for precision anyway, so. So the reason that I do this is because it leaves like a lot less makeup on my face, but still accomplishes the same things. And it's like really just two steps, you know, apply and then blend instead of apply blend, apply blend, apply blend, and end up with maybe, you know, have to get as much makeup on my face at the end. And then, you know, we go in and touch up a little bit. And like that could be it. But I have been wearing more of a powdered look lately, BT dubs. I don't know where my glasses are, but my new glasses leave, instead of a ridge right here, they leave a ridge right here, which is just a barrel of monkeys, isn't it? So that's the general vibe. I have been wearing more powder lately. So I am going to softly powder this with another one of my flavor favorites. This. this is the Kosas. Just powder a little bit with this. And as I describe in my end of the year favorites, you can see it adds a little bit of coverage. And who, who's to say really whether or not I'm going to add more coverage when I want to. I think that the main thing when it comes to like the difference between a full beat and a more chill look for me is the contrast, like how bright am I trying to take the light <laughs> at like here and here and here and then how deep am I willing to take the contour and the less makeup I want to wear that day the more I just kind of concentrate on the color that my face already is and the more makeup that I want to wear the more I'm just like turning up those those dials you know increasing the highlights increasing the shadows just like you would when you're like editing a picture now I'm gonna go with my other, okay, I'm gonna stop saying that it's my favorite because they're all my favorites. This is the Patrick Ta. She's statuesque. And you're like, Khaki, you just did a cream complexion look. Like, why are you going in with powder bronzer? I don't really know. I just like how it looks, okay? With makeup, there are no rules. You could just pull this out, draw a line down the middle of your face. I'm not gonna stop you. So yeah, I think that the exercise of me trying to choose a word of the year has been very much hampered by having a lot of mixed feelings. Like, am I hopeful? <laughs> am I exhausted? Am I really, really trying to make change in my life and be a happier person through, you know, X, Y, and Z isolation of whatever I want to change in my life. Or, you know, like, what's my, what's my level, uh, my threshold of satisfaction? Am I really like unhappy with this thing or can it wait or whatever? And then also just like wanting to simplify a little bit. And then also like, there's just a lot of chaos, right? And sometimes I'm just, I wake up and I'm just like, stop trying to work so hard to be like this quiet minded, meditative individual. It's not your nature. Just be a maximalist, even inside of your brain. So um, I've been, I've been struggling with these things, but I have tried recently to take in inspiration in a non-judgmental way, because it's honestly one of my favorite things to do, but sometimes it stresses me out because I feel like I'm like almost mentally spending money while having some kind of identity crisis because I have such strong visceral responses to visual things that stimulate me, like people's style or art or just people being creative or being motivated or doing really, really cool things. Like it, it's, it fills my heart with motivation. I'm just like, ooh, it's not a comparison thing. It's not an, oh, I wanna chase what they're chasing thing. It's like, oh man, they're really taking a bite out of life. I wanna take a bite out of life kind of thing. But I tend to kind of automatically filter those things as they come into my brain because I'm like, you don't wanna overload yourself, Khaki. You don't wanna invite more stress into your life or something. But I realized that just like we we're talking about the last time I was kind of having this discussion on my channel, I guess my last chatty get ready with me, I need to stop trying to optimize things that I truly enjoy, like being a maximalist, like shopping. I have found some of the most gorgeous 
clothes lately. And there's this part of me that's still like, you should be taking photos of yourself in these outfits so that you can share them on social media, maybe start an outfits account or something like that so that you know, you're know you using this towards your career. Just enjoy something, Khaki. Just enjoy it, let it be yours, you know? Like let it be fun, let it be not optimized. Let it be slow, let it be expensive, let it be whatever it wants to be and stop trying to kind of filter stimulus through some kind of optimization algorithm to make sure that everything is like constantly staying at like a manageable level in your brain because it, that in itself is stressing me out. Does that make sense? I'm going in with my Pat McGrath blush here. So where I've arrived is kind of in Effettsville, you know, the place where you go when you just want to say Effett about everything. And I've, <laughs> I found that like, I wasn't, I was having to look kind of hard to find like memes and accounts and stuff like that, that like mirrored that back at me until the CDC admitted that they changed their recommendation for quarantine to five days because they wanted people to get back to work and it just became this like snake eating its tail, this like ridiculous feedback loop. And then the memes came. Memes uh, truly soothe my soul. And I just started like going through people's stories and just, just the jokes, the jokes were so good. It was, I reposted one, but there were like a thousand that I loved. The one that I reposted was the CDC says that you can violate quarantine if the vibes are off or something. And it was like posted by Diet Prada. I was just like, yeah, that's the mood. Absurdity. Can we all just embrace it? And I realized that the main thing that I've taken from this year, I had a really, really like stimulating conversation with Kiki about this back in October or something, but it stuck with me. And that is that laughter is medicine. It took me and my husband being totally burnt out because <laughs> daycare closed this week because of a COVID scare. So he's been home all week and my mother-in-law is a saint. She's an angel. She's been coming every single day and taking care of him or having him at her house and stuff like that. But we just got very overstimulated through Christmas and everything. We're in leap nine. <laughs> Any parent who keeps track of the wonder weeks, you know what I'm talking about. And I didn't know, I didn't know what leap nine was like. You know, I had friends who were like, we're in leap nine. And I was like, okay, well, we're not. So <laughs> anyway, tunnel vision, you get there and you're like, what? where has my child gone? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> he won't sleep. He's screaming all the time. He only wants formula. He wants to cuddle until he does not want to cuddle. He slaps me in the face. You know, I tell him no and he goes, okay. But then five minutes later, he forgets. He wants to throw a tantrum about everything. He's completely forgotten all of his training. But Mike and I both are just having to really, 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 really reinforce boundaries. And he's a smart kid, smart as a whip and he picks up on stuff, but he's so mischievous. I had to take a toy away from him today because he was, it has wheels, so naturally he was trying to use it as a skateboard. This is a child who falls while standing. We do not need him on wheels. All that to say, we needed a release and Mike and I are kind of quietly always in judgment of ourselves. Like it's that same millennial thing where we feel like we need to be optimizing our time. And I think that it's like we, project judgment upon the other one, like self judgment upon the other one. Like I assume that Mike is judging me because I don't want to watch something cerebral and he thinks I'm judging him because he doesn't want to watch something cerebral. And so we both end up watching something that we don't really like usually something either kind of heavy or complicated or a uh, very, very plot driven instead of watching the office for the fourth time all the way through as a couple, which is what we've been doing. And it has, truly made like a stupidly large difference in my mental health. Okay, I'm gonna put a pin in that for a second. We're gonna talk about Makeup by Mario. I'm letting you guys know I did finally, finally get my hands on the Patrick Ta eyeshadow palette. It has been so long coming. The company told me they were sending it to me. They did send it to me and then it never arrived and no one knows why, no one knows what happened to it. Apparently these things are just that coveted. And then a viewer 
sent it to me and the mail got lost. Okay, it just was apparently never supposed to reach me. I don't know. Sweet, sweet, sweet viewer. And I felt so bad about it. Anyway, it finally came back into stock. I finally bought it. It finally arrived. I am resisting the urge to do a first impressions on that today because I am hellbent determined to show you guys this eye look that I have been loving lately. So it really does. I mean, I've used this one on camera already and I'm not, you know what I mean? I don't need to do that again, but this is, you know, the one that started the fire. It was always burning since the world been turning. But I want to start with the Hindash palette today because that's kind of been the vibe. And then I'm gonna go in with the Master Metallic. So I have this, these are really cute. These are the like holiday BK brushes and they're smaller. Like the brush part isn't, but like the, the little handle is more petite. How cute is that? Okay, so I'm gonna start with Feel of Feel Real here. And that's what I'm just going to apply my general shape with. This is probably based also on the mood that I'm in today. I'm in kind of a warm browns mood. I'm wearing this Mara Hoffman skirt that I just got that I can't stop wearing. And it's only like, it's almost 50 degrees outside today. This is the print on it. I love it so much. And so I didn't really feel the need to like bundle up. I'm actually wearing a skirt. So I have basically, I'm gonna move to the larger version of this brush. It's just throwing me off that like it's not balanced. And I'm going to kind of just move to the middle of that pan because it's a mix of the brown and the gray. And I'm gonna go right in the crease. And I'm gonna go underneath my eye a little bit. So yeah. Laughter as medicine it has never been as pertinent in my life as it is right now because typically, I don't know, there are fewer things that I need laughter medicine for, right? <laughs> but the overwhelm, I think that it's just this general overwhelm. Everyone is feeling to some degree or another right now. I mean, genuinely guys, I have nothing to complain about. I have a beautiful life. We have lots of resources. We have a beautiful, perfect child. We have lots of support. And still, there's just a lot going on, okay? And the more that you have to love, it's also the more that you feel like you have to protect. So it's like every time there's some kind of COVID scare or something, you know, or you wanna travel or anything like that, the concern becomes this little defenseless gremlin, right? And you want to make sure that you're kind of, well, you, know, you don't even have to try to keep him in mind. Like it's what you wake up thinking about every night or every morning, what you go to bed thinking about every night is like the well-being of this human that you created. So that's a kind of the, probably the biggest stressor is just, you know, that, that it all hinges on him, right? Even though he's a hundred percent clueless, and thinks a trip to Home Depot is like going to a theme park or a zoo. Honestly, he like looks around, he's just like. So I'm dipping into tan lines, like right in the middle of it. It's like the white and the very, very, very pale brown. And I love how blurring it is. Ooh, it's so blurring. Okay, for the moment, that's going to be the Hindash palette situation. I'm not even sure I did a very good job of blending it, but it kind of doesn't really matter because like, Shimmer is about to take over the world. Like if I had to put a name to the current aspirational aesthetic right now, it would be dystopian cowgirl fortune teller. And I'm going to go with this shade right here because this has been my favorite one. I think they're just numbered. Yeah, I don't even know why they put the name of it on the back because it's literally just metallics one, metallics two, metallics three. Gosh, how will I ever remember those? So just taking this brown, and working that all over the lid and even a little into the crease. What I like about these is even though they're real shimmery, they don't have like really wacky shifts. And so even if it gets up into my crease there, it uh, it doesn't like, I don't know, it doesn't look ridiculous. It doesn't like distort the light. I think that also my urge to express myself a little bit more through makeup has been a product of the stress and everything. Like you cannot live in Effettsville for very long 
without needing to scream into the abyss. And this is how I scream into the abyss, right? Is by saying, look, if you're gonna make me stay home all the time, I'm at least going to look incredible while I do so. And then when the world does see me, they'll be like, we weren't ready. One of my biggest style icons right now, you guys might've seen it on my Instagram because I just, I, I talk about her all the time and she literally is like my entire Pinterest <laughs> inspiration board is Tracy Ellis Ross. She has the best style. She has the most awesome personality. She is so funny. She's so beautiful. I, I just love her energy. I want to be her friend, but I also want to be her when I grow up. So that is uh, a source of joy lately too. It's like her Instagram. She doesn't post super often, but when she does, it's just always pure gold. Can't recommend highly enough. I'm just taking a brush, the same brush, but really doesn't have very much on it. I'm just gonna blow that out quite a bit, quite a bit. You can always go back in with something, you know, to un unblow it out, right? Okay, the next thing is this kind of like, I don't know, compared to everything else, a little bit orangey gold shade. I'm gonna use that kind of on the inner third here, but not all the way in, but like, I was saying that they layer really beautifully they layer really beautifully. Sometimes when I'm in an even more fortune tellery mood, I will go for like the pinks in here and like layer those on top of the brown. And it gives me more of that like Pat McGrath oil slick vibe, but trust me, there are more steps to this. It's not going to stay this simple. I am gonna try and stay in this palette for the most part though. All right, kind of taking that same color and mirroring that on the bottom. Step next, before I clean up or anything like that, I'm gonna go back into Mr. Hindash, and like you can do this with any mattes palette that you have. I also have the Makeup by Mario Master Mattes, and like, they're very good. I wish that they were a little cooler toned, so that's why I keep touching in here. Discovered lately, I need like a, a smaller brush to really like get that little outer V situation going. So I'm going to touch into Intra here and really accentuate that shadow on the outside of my eye. And I could use the dark shade in that quad, the foreplay everyday quad as well. Sometimes I reach for that. One thing that I have noticed too about the mattes in the Makeup by Mario palettes is that they don't really work very well wet as much as I would want them to. Like the Thrive ones, you wet them and they become like a gorgeous, sooty, liquid line, but That'll be fun to edit. Whenever I pause a long time between words, super fun to edit. And yeah, I mean, she's a little messy. She's a little messy, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna take a little bit of feel and mix it with tan and just use that to fill in. And then a little bit of wet because wet has a little yellow in it. So it's not gonna like glow white on me. Next, and this also came from watching one of Hindash's videos recently, and this actually wasn't in my favorites. Where is she? And that's because it's genuinely not one of my favorite things, but watching him use it just inspired me to try it this way. So this is the Auric Glow Lust, nope. This is the Oryx Smoke Reflect in Temper. He had the other one, I'm not sure what it's called, but he basically used the cream all over and then he used the topper just on the inner corner to like bring this beautiful kind of like gradient brightness from the inner corner out onto the lid. And this Temper topper, the Temper topper, you gotta be real aggressive with it, but I'm gonna be real aggressive with it. And I'm just going to use that Kind of like that. Can you see? This is exactly the eye look that I had in my last video. Just showing it to you. Also, my nails are kind of all in the same mood, aren't they? And I mean, I'm really aggressively piling this on. The one thing that this does 
have on the Hourglass Scattered Light formula. Scattered Light does like to fall out a little bit. This is stiff, but it doesn't really fall out, so that's good. One day, one day, I will find my way to the UAE and I will make Hindesh do my makeup. And then, and then, I was made aware that the swatch of this in my last video, I mean, I saw it when I uploaded it, I kind of had to adjust the light on those swatches after edit, like after filming, because as soon as I get my hand up like this, everything blows out. So this is that highlighter that I was talking about from Beauty Pie, and they just said that the swatch was really hard to see. So there we go. Is that more helpful? I'll put it like near my face so that you can get a better idea. But it's kind of rose gold. That's just the reflection like that. So what I have been doing, for my eyes at least, is I have this random brush from Quo, I wanna say? Yeah, this was sent to me by my friend Ludo, because Quo is only in Canada. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, lots and lots of it. And to take it on this little Quo brush, I like it because it's stumpy and it's also angled. Mm -hmm. Is that helpful? Is that helpful? And I will take that and just paint it on my inner corner, kind of the whole area, because it's light enough that it doesn't have a super obvious line of demarcation. It almost kind of looks like a color corrector, <laughs> you know, like the Becca one. It's like got that same pink color to it. And that bridges, well, I guess it serves as the other end, right, of bridging the gap with the glitter from Auric and then the makeup by Mario Shimmer. A little paint by numbers moment, you know? But like, that is the most effective, consistent, blurring, youthful, light reflecting in a flattering way, highlight that I have like ever used. I kind of just, you know, get carried away with it. I also f finally <laughs> tweezed my eyebrows. Put that right there. I, guys, it's as easy as it looks. The next thing that I'm gonna do is a little bit of eyeliner. And then I will also clean. I will clean everything up. And this wasn't in my favorites because it came out years ago, but I mean, this is pretty much the only eyeshadow that I really like reach for when it comes to doing uh, an eyeliner with it, is the Thrive one. We're gonna draw a pretty smudgy line. And what I have been doing is kind of exaggerating the smudgy line and even using the same shadow to just kind of blur it into my like outer V. We'll see if I end up doing that today, but just mainly getting it right there, close to the lash line and right there. And just kind of pulling it out like that. That actually went really well. There's no way I'm gonna be able to do that again. Yeah, I need to smudge this one now because it's like, I'm not gonna be able to match that precision. That was pure luck. All right. And this is actually usually why I start like blending it a little bit is just because it ends up looking a little bit different between the two eyes. And I also find that like, I just kind of want <laughs> a little, a little bit more, you know? And blend it a little onto the very, very outer edge of my lid and up. Like, is it perfect? No but I, I just love the way that it looks. Makes me feel powerful. Yes, I love it. Now I need to clean this whole situation up. And the way that I'm going to do that is with a couple of things, right? I'm going to start with my well people here. And I'm gonna do this mostly with this little brush from Wayne Goss, the O2, which is extinct as far as I know. And see how much like brightening I can get from that without applying more complexion product because I don't really think I need to, but I do think I need more blush. What blush do I want? Ah, Dior, Dior. There were people who wanted to see this kind of in, in action again. So this is the Dior 001 pink. I don't remember why this wasn't in there. I think, okay, so someone told me that Carmine might not be the issue. I didn't put this in my favorites because of the Carmine because I thought it was leaving little dots on my face, because it does leave little dots on my face. Okay, so I was correct in that, but I, it might not be Carmine that's doing it. It might be a different ingredient that's doing it. 
But do you see cheek to cheek the way that that brightens without, I mean, if you're looking for that color, yes, the eye detects that color, but if you're not, it just looks like it woke my face up a little bit. Drawing my brow a little bit further out than it is. I think I might have over tweezed a little bit on this side, yeah. A couple of little errant guys and I think I tweezed them in error. I lost my shape because I waited way too long. And I do want to get a little tiny bit more like lift out of my eye look here. So I'm gonna take a little bit of tan lines and just clean up right here because tan lines is kind of a blend of white and uh, beigey brown. And to me, it does a good job of like mimicking my skin tone. You could pretty much find anybody's skin tone in this palette though, you know? And I'm going to spray this with a whole lot of Fix Plus because it's going to make all of this come together. I think something that I have really learned this year has been that I need to take more risks interpersonally. I have been so guarded with myself and I've only had truly rewarding friendships when other people have gone out of their way to like go more than halfway in terms of making me feel comfortable opening up to them and I owe it to myself and to other people to be more of a risk taker in that respect. But I also am just so grateful for like all the Aquariuses in my life <laughs> who are just outgoing connectors. You know, they're just really, really good friend makers. And the fact that like there have been people in my life who have facilitated me becoming like f friends with other people that I would never have known otherwise. Um, I've actually made friends this year on the platform, met them in person, several of them. I'm planning on doing even more this coming year and really, really increasing those kinds of things in my life because I do have a tendency towards isolating. I almost always have the urge in my mind where I'm like, eh, I'd rather be by myself right now. And that's not healthy. Even when I was a child and they tested me for all of my you know, giftedness and what have you, they told my mom that. They were like, you need to make sure that you like put her in every activity, every program that you possibly can because she is perfectly content to be by herself. And if you ever like want her to make friends, she needs to be in an environment that makes her comfortable making friends because she's, she's kind of a, <laughs> I, I tend to retreat. So especially in the current climate where we are all literally isolating, I'm just so grateful that the people who I have become friends with, I'm grateful for them for going out of their way to do so because I am terrible about it. All right, let's mascara. And yes, I know they're called Aquarians. I just liked saying Aquariuses, it's like octopuses. This just really sets off the look. This is the authored brow gel. It's got hold, it's got pigment. I really feel like Tanya Burr and I have like the same taste in a lot of things. <laughs> like after using her makeup line, I'm like, you get me. Okay, and then the last thing is, duh, the Westman Atelier Nana Squeaky Clean Liquid Lip Balm. Hello? Okay, just make sure my mic still works. Jesus, that would've been terrible. And that is the latest vibe, guys. This is the one you've seen me wearing some version of in the last few videos. I got to share my one layer routine with you guys for my complexion. But really, the purpose of this video, aside from showing you all my favorite things in action, is to just close out or open up, I haven't decided yet, the year in a way, like bookend it, right? And say, it's been like a beautiful, difficult, beautiful, year for me. Amazing. Moved to New Jersey. My kid celebrated his first birthday. I've had so many different lifestyle changes. I went full time this year. The channel has become not like, it's not a job for me anymore. It's like this beautiful refuge, like this sanctuary for me. And it makes me so happy. I love my chaos. It's, it's, it's perfect. Like I really feel like I've constructed this world here that is just where I feel the safest, which is wild because I'm like putting myself on the internet for the masses. But regardless, I am so grateful for that. And the thing that I feel like unifies all of us and that has really been like the through line for my life lately has been laughter. 
I truly think that any word, any resolution, anything that I were to set forth for the coming year, I would probably end up feeling too much pressure from it. My New Year's resolution, my word of the year is laughter. I aim to laugh as much as possible. I don't think that there is anything as too much laughter, any such thing as too much laughter. And it's something that is so easily shared. It puts everybody at ease and it creates a common space for people who would not normally feel comfortable relating to one another, hi, me, to relate to other people. And I like making people laugh. I like finding things that make me laugh and sharing them. And I have always done that like on my Instagram and things like that. But I think that what I have found is just that whether people are necessarily looking for it or not, it does tend to be the great equalizer. And the way that people tell me that they interact with my channel, that they come here for levity, like I feel no pressure by that. I'm not like, I need to always be happy. I need to always be cheerful, a bright ray of sunshine. I'm not gonna fake that for anybody if that's not how I'm feeling that day. What people really need is sincerity. And when I am truly in my most sincere, and you guys have seen it, like when I'm so low energy, like I have completely <laughs> run out of steam. I don't even have fumes anymore and I'm on Dayquil. It's honestly when I make the funniest jokes because that's how I cope. And I think that like, <laughs> so, that <laughs> so that the word of the year for 2022 isn't cope. <laughs> is that like, can we all just try and cope? Um, I, I just want it to be this kind of togetherness vibe. And the best way to do that is to learn to laugh, to laugh at ourselves, to laugh at everything that's going on because, oh my God, it's absurd. It's ridiculous. Absurdity is my favorite kind of humor. And if I don't laugh, I don't know what I'll do. I have to make a joke about it or I'll die. So that is my goal for 2022. I think that it's gonna be beautiful again. I think it's probably going to be painful again, but it's definitely going to continue to be absurd. And I hope that you guys will uh, enjoy joining me for another year of fun and laughter and silliness and some makeup even, um, introspection, what have you, on this channel uh, in, the, in the coming year. But um, I really credit you guys with contributing so much of that general vibe to this channel. You guys make me laugh so hard in the comments. Just like the turns of phrase and the timing, like y'all are my people. I repost comments so much. Y'all are funnier than me. Y'all are more clever than I am. I just super appreciate, I'm just so grateful. But I at least made something pretty happen, even if my neck is a completely different color than my face. It doesn't matter, who cares? I'm wearing a turtleneck. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. If this is your first time on my channel and you're not yet subscribed, make sure that you subscribe down below. My videos are usually like this. <laughs> so if you liked the vibe of this one, just look forward to more. And uh, I just, I love you guys. I love you guys so much. And again, thank you so much for being part of my channel. And uh, I will absolutely, hopefully, see you guys in the next one. Bye.